Well, it's time to build the history of another display team. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Model Making Time, and today we're looking at the Jet Provost of the Red Pelicans display team. <laughs> This is the start of us building the entire history of the Red Arrows. I wasn't going to include this originally. I sort of started the series as just two aircraft, but it expanded to three after my local model store had this in stock and I couldn't resist. I'll explain why I wasn't sure whether or not to include this later on. Just as a quick side, I say three aircraft, there are four models included, but we'll get into that a bit further down the line as well. <laughs> So let's start by looking at what the Jet Provost was. Hunting Percival, I hope I'm saying that right, originally had a non-jet version of the Provost, which was piston engine powered uh, train aircraft. Like many companies and I guess nations around the world, they could see that the future was probably going to need some sort of simple jet trainer. So the design boards were opened up to a jet trainer designed to be simple to operate, but also prepare people for the more modern fighter jets that were starting to come in. This really would be a step forward for jet trainers. It wasn't the first jet trainer in the world, I mean Fokker had the Mach trainer, this would be used by the Dutch Air Force. However, the Jet Provost would be a staple of the Royal Air Force. Three years after initially coming up with the idea for a jet trainer, in 1954, the Jet Provost saw its first flights. On the 16th of June 1954, flown by Dick Weldon, the Jet Provost took to the air for the first time. By November of the same year, the Jet Provost had racked up 123 flight hours. Pretty impressive. Following this, the aircraft was submitted to RAF Boscombe Down, which would be where it would be tested and evaluated. Some changes were made, however, the overall handling of the aircraft was good. Pretty satisfactory. The first production aircraft would fly on the 19th of February 1955, and this would be the T1 variant, the first production variant of the aircraft. On September the 1st of 1955, the T2 variant, which had some developments over the T1, would take to the skies also. This was just a production development model, it wasn't really for extensive use. It would be the T3 that would fulfil that role. This had a more powerful engine in the way of the Armstrong Sidley Viper, and it also had ejection seats fitted as well as numerous other upgrades over the original T2 and T1 models. Compared to the T1 and the T2, the T3 took a bit more time to take to disguise. It wouldn't be until the 22nd of June 1958 where this aircraft would fly. A fairly substantial number of these would be delivered between 1958 and 1962, totaling at 201 units. Two more models would follow, with the T4 having an uprated Viper engine, so a more powerful version, and also the T5, which was a pressurised version, so cabin was pressurised, um, version of the T4. You'll probably also, if you have any interest in sort of the Jet Provost or trainer aircraft, know that a lot of trainers have strike roll or light like fighter or coin variants of the aircraft made, and well, the Jet Provost was no different. The sort of combat variant would be the Strike Master, and that did see export success. Obviously, we're not going to go too far into that because today we're focusing on one model and one model alone. We're building the T4 variant from Airfix. The boxing I've got is for the Red Pelicans display team. So let's have a look about the history of display teams with the Jet Provost in a little bit of detail and how it fits into the Red Arrow story. For anyone who's watched any of my series on the history of a nation's aerobatic team, well, you'll know that sort of dating into the earliest days of aerobatic teams, squadrons would just form their own display teams, sometimes performing only locally, sometimes performing around the country that they sort of were based in. Display teams were not an uncommon sight at all. The era of the Jet Provost was still of that kind. So there were display teams like the McCaws and the Poachers, or the Gemini display team, which was just a, essentially a synchro pair. In Little Rissington, the Central Flying School had a display team formed. They were called the Sparrows. They flew the T1 variant of the Jet Provost, so this dated back quite some time. They would later be renamed the Redskins, which we'll just move on from that. In 1960, the team would upgrade to four aircraft. They wouldn't look very different to general training aircraft though, donning the simple silver and day glow of the Central Flying School. It wouldn't be until halfway through 1962 where the aircraft would get upgrades such as a smoke display system. This would be the dawning of the Red Pelicans. They still currently flew their silver and day glow aircraft however. It would be in 1963 where the display team would be expanded to six aircraft 
and they'd also get their red paint scheme, or yellow red paint scheme. At the end of the 1963 season, it was decided that the Red Pelicans would replace the Firebirds, which flew on English electric lightnings, as the premier Royal Air Force display team. This would be quite short lived though. In 1965, the Red Arrows would replace the Red Pelicans. Yikes. They would continue for some time, wowing crowds, sometimes alongside the Red Arrows, which must have been awesome. However, in 1973, due to the oil crisis, the team ultimately had to disband. Why are we building this team? Well, as we've said, this team was the premier jet display team, or display team in general, I guess, of the Royal Air Force for a year, which would then be replaced by the Red Arrows. The Red Arrows started off with a yellow display team of the Yellow Jacks, and there's been some debate about where the red came from, but a lot of sources I've seen sort of tend to sort of lean towards the Red Pelicans being the inspiration for the Yellow Jacks to replace their yellow scheme with their red scheme because it was more visible in the sky. Obviously this is something the Royal Air Force had experience with because their display team always already flew a red patterned aircraft. I also think it's part of the reason why Airbus chose to manufacture this kit, right? Or at least in this marking, because you'll see it as a starter set. It will be sort of the Red Pelicans uh, Jet Provost, the Red Arrows Net, and then the Red Arrows Hawk. So you've got sort of three aircraft that fit into that. In terms of the series overall, we'll be doing four aircraft, but I'll only actually be building three. The reason for this is I've already built the Yellow Jacks Net. But we'll of course be building the Red Arrows Nats, which will be the video after this one, and that will be followed by a Red Arrows Hawk. Just to clarify, the Red Arrows have had numerous display schemes over the years, from anniversary schemes to just updating their sort of general style. The one I'm doing is for their 50th anniversary, because I've had that boxing for a while now and I really want to do it. So I guess that leads us to a short history of the aircraft itself. If you want to have a look at any of the sources I've used in this video so far, have a look in the description below. If you want to have a look at any of the sources I've used in the video today, have a look in the description below. There's also a book listed in there that I've used, well, I've just read in general and sort of accumulated some knowledge from it. So have a look at that as well. It's a history of the Royal Air Force uh, sort of display teams. Side note, if you do want to build all of the Royal Air Force's display teams, my god, there are a lot of them, <laughs> so be prepared. <laughs> Obviously, if you've liked what you've seen so far, please remember to hit subscribe. It really does help girl out. If you do subscribe and hit that notification bell, you'll be notified of every video that goes up, which is normally on a Monday at 7.30. You'll also get notified of my live streams, which are normally on 4.30 on a Sunday. But as I say before, not always. Sometimes I've got to do things too. <laughs> So let's have a look inside the box of the Jet Provost. And here it is, the Jet Provost, Hunting Percival Jet Provost T4 in the Red Pelican. So you can see I've cut my box because it came with the paints and everything on top, uh, but it does have sort of how you mark the aircraft in the back, which I think is really nice. The box art of it is a bit meh. Um, it, it, it could have been more animated, I think, but let's have a look inside time with the decals then and you get a small set it has a cockpit on it and then all the external markings and I like that you get the black uh, sections for the wings that's the bits the bottoms there so yeah it's a really nice set of decals should be great so the instructions are pretty nice for this kit I like how they've got red to indicate bits that you've either just added or uh, have just sort of touched and that really helps you know you understand the journey you're going on for this kit. I just wish it had the um, colour scheme at the back because there's nothing instead. <laughs> okay, so the glass of this kit. Um, okay, FX are always absolutely on point with this. Just look at my nails through the transparent part. It's honestly impeccable. I was really impressed with how clear these are. The fact you get two cockpit canopies as well so you can have it open or closed, I think is genius first brew section just the wings <laughs> quite straightforward really there's not a lot to discuss here but yeah second sprue and much like the wings it's all really nicely detailed a lot of engraved panel lines and not too many parts to put together there hopefully here you can just see how good the detailing is on this fabulous little kit final sprue then underside of the uh, wings pilots and the tail section and again the detailing on this kit um is absolutely amazing uh, sorry it went out of focus a little bit but there you go you can see how 
gorgeous this kit is. Honestly, Apex, you did an amazing job on this. I'm really impressed. I mean, even the pilots are pretty well detailed here. They have it, the unboxing, and what a fabulous kit this is. So, that was the boxing. Now, this kit looks very, very straightforward, and it's really cool that it gives you an option of whether to build it in a closed or an open cockpit fashion, and, well, I sort of ended up making that decision through error, but I'm really happy with the sort of end results. So, let's get into the construction of this aircraft, and then I'll be back to you. <laughs> okay, so construction of this kit. We won't go into, like, super critical detail we'll have a breakdown of the kit later on so we'll just talk through what we've done um i did have a few issues with my camera freezing so there's a little bit where you might have missed a few bits but essentially we're putting together the cockpit and you can see the instructions behind me you're putting in sort of the basic elements and assembling the seats now the seats i was impressed by they're really really nicely detailed and just add a bit of realism to the kit that i'm normally kind of opposed to but for some reason I just really gelled with it in this kit um it was really really cool you assemble it overall as like a tub and then you pop it into the canopy uh the cockpit section sorry and you can see I put in some uh filler and just pop some paper clips in that I cut up and use for weight popping the fuselage together the aircraft is mostly complete at this point Sticking the wings on was really straightforward, and then obviously you're gluing the top section on top of that. There was pretty much no gap between the fuselage and the wings. I didn't really feel the need to do anything to fill it, which I feel is quite a rarity in aircraft at least, so that was really nice. And the tail section slots in as one piece. Again, a really nice addition, because uh, normally that's two sections, so I was really happy to see that. That's pretty much the kit done at this point. We do need to put the landing gear in, of course, and that's nothing sort of overwhelming. I sprayed the kit with Humbrol 14 after I'd sprayed it with Humbrol Grey Primer. After that, it was just some touching up on where I wanted um, things to sort of stand out or pop. So I put beige as the color of the seats on the cockpits. I've seen various different colors online that I was using as reference and I settled with beige because I thought it gave a really nice contrast against sort of the red that we're using. I think the red of this aircraft is the later stages of the red pelicans because it seems more of the post box red than the day go red. Um, but the pictures I found online, um, I don't know. I I, I think uh, that's my assumption is that it's sort of the post box red as opposed to the day glow red as it's sort of labelled as. Um, you can see the panels are really detailed as well, um, just from the undercoating, which is awesome. Undercarriage was added, and that was nothing sort of overwhelming. It was very simple and straightforward, but they hold the weight of the aircraft, and that's really important because some aircraft. <coughs> Alpha Jet <coughs> don't don't do that, so I'm always thrilled when that happens. The black painted semicircle on the front was added, and I just did that freehand. I feel like for those who are less de uh, dexterity abled um, or less experienced, I guess, would have been nice if that was a decal. It is another kit, so you know, it would be nice if it was. Just just saying, I have it. <laughs> but otherwise, it was just a case of applying all the decals, and there aren't a massive amount, but I was still impressed with them, particularly with the central flying school bit, which goes on the side of the fuselage, because that's red against red, and somehow it still shows up really well, so I was super impressed with that. Having the college image, coloured image even on the back of the box is really good as a reference point, and uh, as well as using obviously sources online as well, which can really help. The black strips on the wings as well, I was glad they were a decal because they're sometimes not a decal, which is confusing because they're not a straight line. So I think for that symmetry, it's really helpful that they are. And black is such an easy decal to do because it's just super opaque compared to some of the other colours, so glad that was at least included uh, as long with the sort of black parts on the air intakes as well. So overall I was really impressed with the decals of this kit to be perfectly honest with you. There was nothing that disappointed me, nothing broke, nothing fell apart, and then after that it was just painting on the de uh, details even, so apologies that I went off screen with that several times, but that was just essentially a silver or aluminium, I think actually I used steel, sorry, um, on the undercarriage and the jacks and then we were pretty much done at that point. <laughs> so that was the construction of the aircraft. Yeah, I did sort of do the canopy open and that was just because 
I think I ended up having the wrong one painted. <laughs> so that's what we ended up with. But you know, I've never done an open cockpit before and I actually really like it. I think it looks really cool. So maybe more in the future. Anyway, let's have a look at the model and uh, well, then we can talk about it a bit more. <laughs> I, I honestly, I, I'm really proud of it. I think this little guy looks amazing. It was really, really simple to do. I did this whole thing in literally just like one day, not even that, it didn't take me a full day, obviously. It was super, super simple. Obviously the painting of this was literally an undercoating in gray Humbrol primer, and then a coating of Humbrol 14 spray can red. Um, I have found that if you don't use the undercoating, the red doesn't stick properly and for whatever reason the formulation seems to be off in the red and it does sometimes go a bit patchy um, so you might have to do a couple of coatings. I must say as well the detailing on the kit is superb. I never really built the old Jet Provost so I have no, nothing really to compare it to but this one I think just looks so cute, so adorable and I love the fact that you can have it with an open cockpit or a closed cockpit and it just has an awesome finish to it. This kit is super, super simple, and I really, really enjoyed it. I sat on a really lovely January day, just <laughs> with the window open, hearing the birds, and just building this kit. I honestly lost myself in this kit, and it's it was just a real joy to build. There was no stress, it was just simple and straightforward. Sometimes that's just what you want, you know? And, you know, I'm not I'm not opposed to kits being more complex, but God, I really, really enjoyed this. And I find this on a lot of new Airfix kits. They're so simple and easy to put together. There's no stress involved. And even when they have little fiddly bits, it's not that bad. So yeah, I, I did really enjoy this kit. I don't really have a bad thing to say about it. I think the options it gives you are fantastic. I think the price point is pretty bang on. Um, I think I got mine from a local model store, which I know is more expensive, but it's an independent and I like supporting it. And I think it cost me, I think 10 pounds. So the boxing you will have seen on the screen, um, I cut the top off. It came with like paints and glue at the top. Um, as you often see in like a hanging blister pack. The newer FX one um, is sort of just a simple box um, with the paints and everything inside of it. And that one cost more than the old versions. Obviously I got the old one. Everything fit together really smoothly. I don't think I used a single bit of filler on this whatsoever. It was just an absolute joy. The decals themselves are fantastic quality. FX one of the few manufacturers where I never really doubt that their decals are gonna be good quality. Although sometimes it might tear a bit easy, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Didn't have any of that in this instance. I moved them around really easy. I used decal fix to get them secured down after I applied them with water. I would say the only thing you really needed was extra colors for the cockpit if you wanted it. So I used a beige for the seats, which I don't think, I mean, looking online, there are lots of different colors I could see for the seat coverings. Um, and I just went for that because I think it looked the best and I'm not a stickler for historical accuracy per se. Um, I'd rather have a model that looks really nice than is necessarily the most historically accurate. Um, the kit itself came with most of the paints you'd need to make this kit. It, I, like, I like the red arrows, it's, it's a one colour kit essentially. So it, it's really good. So in terms of buy or fly, buy this kit. Like, just buy it. If you want to spend literally an afternoon making a kit and have something at the end that you go, wow, I'm really happy with this, buy it. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for joining me on building this Red Pelicans Jet Provost. I had an absolute blast. I hope you had a blast watching this video as well. Remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell too. And I'll see you next week for another video at 7.30. And if you'd like to join me on the live streams, they're on Sundays at 4.30. 
Bye. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have fun modeling.